What's going on, people? This is your boy Ellis here. As you can tell from the title, today we are going to be talking about um, OBD11 um, tuning stuff and um, whatnot. So we are inside for now. Um, I have previously done a video on the OBD11. I'll link it up at the top up here somewhere. But I haven't yet um, messed around with the Carista app or the Carista um, programming device i mean they're pretty much the same thing but the interfaces might be different and stuff like that and obviously there might be a few you wondering what one should i get should i get the obd 11 should i get the obd 11 or should i get the carista um so we're gonna go i haven't even opened this yet i've had it like sitting there for over a month now so it's a quick unboxing and then set it up we'll go to the car and see how it all plays out These are both of them on a side by side comparison. Um, not that it makes much of a difference. It's not about what it looks like um, profile or just more or less what the the punch it packs. I guess would like to say. Um, I'm sure the Carista has an iPhone app, so let's try and download that. So we have got the Carista app on the iPhone. So let's get that quickly, and then we head out to the car and see what this is all about. Probably the wrong way around. Let's turn that. Bam! There, it has got a light. You can see the light from right there shining on my hand. So that's a good start. Okay, let's turn the ignition on. Somewhat. All right, and shut up. Let's go to customize and see. So I've got the Carista up. I've got to turn Bluetooth on. Bluetooth on. Okay. Customize again. Carista connecting to your OBD device. So let's see if it connects without me to do, having to do anything. So this seems to be the menu I'm greeted with. Um, so obviously now with the the um, the OBD 11, they have like images to represent everything. So this is just a, a lot more. Um, it's kind of like this this more analog, like retro kind of feel or kind of looking. Whereas on the on the OBD it's more like graphic kind of so I guess that's that's the difference but that doesn't like says anything about the ability of this one but I'm gonna have a quick look through it see what can and can't be done and then I will get back to you with like a little comparison to between the two different ones I'm sorry if all you can hear is the AC it is absolutely boiling and I had to turn it on 27 degrees oh my god I'm not complaining though. So I won't show you um, all the things that you can and can't do. It's more or less the same as the last video, the OBD11 one. But what I did notice a few different options. So the one that I am really, that I tried to find on the OBD11 that wasn't there is um, mirror, auto mirror fold with one click off the remote before you had to hold the remote for like five seconds before it closed. So this one says um, single click. So I'll show you before and after actually. Um, let's stay in the car and do that hold it I'm holding it and now the fold open um, I'll do it again so you can see that from how long it actually takes from when I, I close it okay so close button I'm holding it I'm holding it I'm holding it and now the fold up oh that was long so obviously I don't want that open it let's put the key back in the ignition and do this again so this is single click so I'm gonna press put it on single click um, so single click and save So let's see if this works if it does then I'll be super happy because then that kills the battery as well When you have to keep holding on to it and I do need to change the battery in the remote. It's been warning me for like a month now Okay, so that said it's finished. So let's see this if this works. I'll be actually I think I'll be happy. So one click That is I'm, I'm, I'm sold Yes, I've been wanting that to be done for ages not be asked to move this right now so I'm not gonna move it I'm just gonna slot in right there don't watch the toes okay okay so a few days after and obviously I've messed around with the with the Carista and the OBD 11 app before but I haven't tried it on a BMW now the main issue the main reason for this is that the, the OBD 11 
does not work on BMWs, only work on VAC cars. Whereas the Carista apparently works on BMWs as well. So um, this is my dad's BM. Um, obviously, as I said, we never tried a BM before, so we're gonna see what we can and can't do. And you might be saying, why are you messing with your dad's car? But whatever I would want to do to this BMW, I'm sure my dad would want to do it. Do to this BMW. So, for instance, if this was my car, whatever I would like to do with this, I'm pretty sure my dad would like it as well. So, I think the OBD11 port is somewhere down here as well. Oh, this is. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you, Lord. I was gonna say this is gonna be an issue now because I don't know where it is. I think. Uh, I'm gonna have to bend down for this one. Oh shit, it's over here. This is annoying. This one's over here. Thank you God for YouTube, eh? Thank you for YouTube so much. There we go. <laughs> oh, now we just plug this bad boy in. Right there. We've got the red lights on so it must be connected and we get the app. Obviously the car has to be on as well. The secure. Oh, shut up man, why does this always happen? Every time I turn a car on, the radio comes on, it's so frustrating. I think I need to code that out, we'll flip it out. Okay, so let's go into the Carissa app. On the mobile again, this should be fun. The blue light should start flashing there if it's getting connected. So hopefully, yeah, there we go, the blue light's flashing, so that means it's connected. And let's see what options we get on the app. Surprise, surprise, so just my luck, it happens that the device doesn't work on this particular BMW, which is super annoying. But at the moment, I'm sending some information so that they can program it to work with this car. So that's super annoying. I thought it said BMW, so I don't see why it's not working on this particular BMW. Um, I mean, it's not like it's some bloody like 1980s BMW. It's just like a what? 316i. So. Well, that's a frustrating. So I'm gonna do that. Let's get the other device from my car, actually. I've decided I'm not gonna let that complete because the last thing I want is this car not being able to start or some shit. That's, I don't know why that worries me, but when you plug something into your car that can read the whole like computer and stuff like that, then, I mean, it's not my car, it's my dad's car. So the last thing I want is like some error thoughts or whatnot, and then it messes up the ECU and then the car ain't able to start. I'm saying that like I'm worrying you. Like, I don't think that happens, but I'm just paranoid. As I said, it's not my car, so I'm not gonna do that. So, let's give you a little quick rundown comparison of both of them. So that's the Carista and the OBD11. Come on. Okay, so that's both the, the devices. So what else? So now my first experienced experiences, I'm gonna talk about my thoughts and what one I would get if I was in the market to purchase one. So obviously with my car, I've got a VAG, a Sia, Leon, Cupra, two, well not 280, so 297. I got a Dino, that MVM. Anyways, so we've got these two and this is the one I had first and I've done some bits and bobs with my car. Obviously I'll, put, I'll link the video up top and you guys can go watch that. I did some bits of my car. Now, I think the main differences, um, I think there's like main two main differences. Well, three main differences. I'm gonna cover them. So the first one is the interface. So if you remember the OBD11 interface, that was like very visual and like images. They see like an image of the car. Well, not the actual car, but like the model of the car and like loads of images of like whatever you're gonna tune, like it shows you an images and like information of what that does, etc. Whereas with this, it's just like plain black and white, if you would like to call it. I just said on, it just tells you what the thing is and then you say on, off, like this, that and the other. Just like, just a simple like on and off kind of function really. And the second one being with this, there's something called adaptation. So as well as having the same feature as this, where you can just go in and turn stuff on and off. You can also, um, like if you're a tuner, and you know a bit more about like turning stuff on and off inside the car you can go into the adaptations feature of this one and i tried it in my previous video because i went on the forums and they can and they were telling me like loads of different things that you can do so basically if you know a bit more about like coding and stuff like that you go into the adaptations and then you mess around with like sub menus and stuff like that to get stuff to work and without you having having to pay for it that's the third thing that i'll mention in a bit but you go into the adaptations that it depends on your knowledge of coding you can change stuff around without like a simple on and off feature and go a bit more into detail kind of thing whereas with this it's just like on and off like there's no like sub menu where you can go in and, and tweak stuff like down in the menu that like the average eye wouldn't see which like i mean 
if you if you're not into that kind of stuff anyways if you're just like looking to just turn stuff on and off on your car then this might seem like the obvious choice however with this um however <laughs> i just got that mis mixed up with this one regardless of your knowledge you have to pay a subscription fee so the subscription fee is this is the third point so the, subs the subscription fee is 33 pound a month or something like that yes 33 pound a month now with that you can do unlimited like on and off so if it if you switch something off and you want to turn it back on you can do that as many times as you want and obviously that's reoccurring every month a 33 pound a month subscription fee so now that's been that however with this one now the obd11 you pay for points we would like to call it like or tokens so for instance for example like majority of the things cost around 10 tokens and i can't remember the exact the exact cost for 10 tokens but let's call it like five pound for 10 tokens no not now not five pound for 10 tokens five pound for like 50 50 tokens all right now 10 pound for 50 tokens that, that seems a bit of a ripoff i can't remember the exact price but it was a bit like oh, i don't want to pay that but anyways as i was saying that's where the adaptation part comes in because with the, with the adaptations part if you know what you're doing you don't have to use tokens you can just do it literally you just purchase this make an account and you can just code without having to pay anything but if you want the simple on and off feature then you will have to pay for tokens um but the problem but as i was saying now with buying tokens like if you if you turn it off then that's 10 tokens if you want to turn it back on then that's 10 tokens if you want to so back and forth back and forth so every everything you select and you confirm you have to pay that given token whereas with the carista obviously with the monthly subscription fee you can you have you can do it unlimited amount of times and as as i was saying there was literally only one thing that i'd done from from that I didn't get to do on the obd11 that i done on the carista so that might say a lot. I'm not, I'm not saying which one is better or not. And what, how can I forget the obvious plus point of the Carista is that it works with BMWs as well. Now, it's, it's giving me a bit of problem with this BMW. So that's a bit of like a shame. I couldn't get to really see what features is on there. But I have seen videos on YouTube that it does work with the BMW. So obviously, if you have a VAG car, then this is the obvious winner. If you have VAG and BMW, then this is the, v the obvious winner. If you just have a BMW, then this is the obvious winner. Um, so yeah, it depends on what car you have, and if you yeah, that it depends on what car you have really. But for me personally, if I was meant to choose what one to have, um, what one would I have? If I had a BMW, I would have the Carista hands down. But because I have a um, a VAG car like Audi. Golf, um, Seat, um, Skoda, etc. Then I'd have to go with the OBD11 because it does everything, and you don't have to pay a monthly subscription fee, and you don't really have to pay for points as long if you if you are if you want to go online if you want to take the extra step and go online maybe go through the forums and see how you can do certain how you can do and unlock certain features. Then obviously this is the one to go to. But as I said, BMW, Carista, Vag Cars, OBD11. That's I'm sorry if that seems like I'm sorry and I'm not. Yeah, it just shows how tiny they are and you can just store them anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, so that's my little informative video. Um, I know it wasn't the most entertaining, it was very informative. So if you're in the market for one of those, that's my opinion on it. Now, because this video wasn't like the most entertaining, I'm going to be giving one of these away. Because I have two, I don't need two. They both do pretty much the same thing, apart from if I had a BMW. Like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. So I'm going to give one away. If this video gets... 200 likes that's not really asking for much if this video gets, if this video gets 200 likes then um obviously i will if this, leave a comment below if you want one or dm me on instagram i'll probably you probably have a better chance if you dm me on instagram because then i'll see that more than the comments because i get so many comments from different videos so dm me on instagram if you're interested in having one of them and if this if the video gets 200 likes then i'll send what i just choose someone and send it out here now i did previously do one of this um I did previously do a giveaway with, with paddle shifter extensions and I did send that out to the individual but however the um um however the mail I don't think it got to him because I was messaging him back and forth and it didn't get to him but I just haven't been able to follow it up find a receipt and call up royal mail to to get them to send it back to me so I can send it again you can see how long of a process that is so I am true to my word and I will send it out to you if you if this video gets 200 likes and obviously you send me a message on instagram so that being said hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did 
Get this video 200 likes, leave a comment and subscribe if you're not subscribed and I'll see you guys in a next video. I talk way too much.